All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a daisy chain for inshore tuna. Uh, this chain works great for the albacore that we get, false albacores, skipjacks, bonita, uh, Spanish mackerel, mahi-mahi. Simple little oil, we're gonna make this with jets, and I'll show you all the steps to making it. So for starters, we have the jets that we're gonna use. I decided to go with the purple, with the chrome jet heads on these. I have four jets we're gonna be putting into this daisy chain, the last one being the biggest. As you can see right here, this would be the last. And then followed by, well, behind the three small ones in the front. These are just simple, cheapo jet heads that you can get at any tackle store. All right, so to do this rig, you're gonna need a measurement. So we have our yardstick here. You're gonna need a Sharpie marker to mark your measurements and some monofilament. We're gonna be using 80 pound monofilament for this rig. So I'm gonna take you through the steps. So to start, we're gonna put our hook on, okay? This is just a regular tuna hook. As you can see, stainless steel. So that's gonna be the first thing that we put on this rig. To start with the hook, we have two pieces of shape gear here. We have a smaller one and a bigger one. I like to use the smaller one for the hook. So we start with a crimp, which we place over the 80 pound test. Now these crimps are made for 80 pound. You know, you can see the mark right on the bag. All right, this is a simple, just offshore angler from Bass Pro. So start with your crimp. Then you're gonna place your chafing gear on there. Okay. And from there, you're gonna go with your hook. So we'll get that in like that. Put this back through the crimp. Okay. Then what I like to do for a little extra precaution, I have the tag end. I just burn it a little. If I can get this lighter to work. I don't have too much flame there. I think I ran out of gas on that one. All right, all right, the talent was being a little stubborn on that one, so let's do this again. So as I was showing you before, the lighter wasn't working. I have to go to the old traditional lighter. You're just gonna burn a little bit of the edge of that, and then you're gonna take it and push it up against an object, and you're forming basically a little mushroom head on that, on that piece of mono. Then what you do is simply run it up and slide it down. Now you can see right there. So that's going to be your first crimp. And that's nice and smooth in there. You can see where that mushroom head sits in. And that alone actually will hold it. Well, not with a fish on it, but hold it that it's tight that you can snug down. Now you're going to get your crimp. These are smaller crimps. So for this one, I believe it's the middle one that we crimp with on this one. I would have to look at the paper, but I'm pretty sure that's what we did for this one. It's the middles. So with the crimps, you always want to make sure that you leave a little bit on the ends. You want it to flare up on the end. You don't want it to get right close to the end. So just do that little bit of flare. So crimp that. One, and then I like to make it even. I'll take a look to see how it's looking. And I see I could take a little bit more over here. Still make sure that it's even in here. Before you crimp down. I'm gonna take that off camera for a second. Sorry about that guys, just had to take that off camera for a second because I couldn't see with this rusty crimper. It was hard to open it, but as you can see now, we have flare on both sides. Let me try to get that focused in for you where you can see that. So you definitely want a little flare on both sides of your crimp, and on that side and a little bit on the other side. So you can see that it's popped on there. You don't want to be flat straight against it. You always want that little bit of flare on each side. All right, so that's basically your crimp. All right, so the next thing you want to do is you have to line up your hook where you want it to lay in the skirt of this lure. So I'm gonna put that down here so you can see it. So what I would do is I'd lay the hook up to it, feel where the hard part of the head is, which is right there, and I would lay the hook up to it. So right, that's where the hook would basically lay on there. Now, I like it to be a little further back, so what you could do is you add beads, or you could add uh, these things right here that pile on top of one another to make space, but you know, the lure is so small, so we're just going with a basic red bead, which goes well with the purple. So I decided to put two on there, as you can see from there. And then what you do is we're going to slide our lure 
all the way up on it. So you take the law from here, flip it upside down, get the skirt out of your way. Find out where the hole is in there. And pop it through and go all the way. So let me take this off and I'll show you how it sits. You want to make sure you have everything clear, nothing gets tangled up in there. You have to pull it all out, anything. You can see any of the legs or anything. And make sure you're going right up against that head. And this time spin around. So that's where my hook's going to lay now. Just by adding those two beads. And that's the first part of your lure completed. Alright, so the next step to this lure is we have to start spacing out where your next lures are going to be. I personally like to go three feet, and so I can put this on my yardstick. I'm going to measure out 36 inches right there, and then I take my marker and I put a mark on the mono. Right there, and that little black dot is my 36 inches. So what you do here now is another little trick. You have another sleeve. You're going to run another sleeve down the line, okay, right to your mark. I'm also starting with 10 feet of monofilament too. So you run it right down to where your mark is. So where did I put that mark now? I have to find it. There it is right there to the mark. I'm not sure if you can see that. And I'll put the crimp right up onto that. So there's the mark and there's the crimp right there. But now to crimp this, what you need to do is you need to take another piece of mono of the same thing. So I'll just cut a little off the end here with my scissor. It's a small piece you need. Very small little piece of mono. And you just cut that off. You can actually have these pre-cut too to make things a little easier. That just shot somewhere, so let's do another one. There it is. Now, I'm going to start from the side where the original lure is, okay? Because I want to make this flat and nice and flush. So when the bead sits on it, the lure sits pretty on it. You don't want it sticking out because if it sticks out, you're basically going to have the lure sitting uneven and run it back up right basically to that. And then that, you really just do basically one crimp right down the center and you should be good with that. Kind of get it right in the middle and just Make sure you're lined up on that lot, dot, dot, and then crimp down. Okay. Like I said, these things are rusty, a little bit of a pain to open and close. All right. So that's done. Now, as you can see, the line's down on the bottom part right here. Okay, so it's over there. So that's nice and flush up front. And there's that single crimp on it. You can see how the flare is on both sides. From there, you take your next lure. I'm not going to use any beads or anything. I believe these are pretty flush inside. Okay, I'm just going to take that. Basically, it's upside down again, same as the other. Oops. It's always fun to look through a viewfinder while you're doing this. And put it through. See, it's coming through the tip. And you're going to run that lure all the way down your mono. And that should be good. If it needs a bead, if you see it sliding past the crimp, then obviously you need a bead. At that point, we'll just put a bead in there. But she's sitting tight. Okay. So now what we have so far, as you can see the daisy chain starting to form. You have your hook lure, your hook bait, 36 inches. And there's your first lure on the chain going up the smaller baits. Now from here, what I'll do is I'll measure out the lure. These happen to be four inch jets. So I'm going to go a foot plus four for the next crimp. That's the way I like to make these laws. So you can just throw this on the ruler. So there's your foot, you got 12. Whoops, let me just do that for you again. So here you're on the, the tip of the ruler there, you hold it. You got your 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. There's your four inches for the, uh, the lure itself. So take that, grab your, your marker, mark it. Okay, now you have your mark on your thing. Sorry, I have a cat in my mouth. 
and you can see there's your next mark on the line. I'm not sure if you can pick that up, that little black dot. And again, it's the same thing, we'll repeat it with the crimp and the, um, the extra piece of mono. Okay, so off camera, I just put my crimp in that extra piece of mono. As you can see, it's sticking out the back. Again, we want to keep the front nice and flush. Just have all the extra sticking out the back. Put it onto your mark. Get your crimper. And you're going to go one crimp on it. Just one squeeze, dead in the middle. You're golden. That's all you need. Okay. Definitely grease up your crimpers if they're rusted like this one. Just give me a little trouble. So that's your second one over there. See, this one I did a little uneven, not paying attention is good, but it's still all right. But you definitely want that flare on the edges. So we take our next lure, and we're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna flip it over, spread out all the tail that's on there. So you can see down there, take your mono. Oops, I lost sight of it again. Run it down, through, and run this down the lure all the way down to your next crimp. So now what you have is you'll have your 36 inches right here, 36 inches coming down, and then you have your little teasers as one, and a foot will be the next one. So like, remember, I put added four inches to make up for the tail of that. So let's put that on the ruler. And so what's that? Actually at 13. So I added a little bit too much. These were probably three inch laws. I thought they were four, but again, it's no big deal. So it's at 13 inches, well, 12 and three quarter inches. They'll be apart. Now for the next one, we do the exact same thing. Come up and you want to do the exact same measurements that are even. There's your sitting. We went up to 16, drop it on 16, get your permanent marker. Okay, I made my line in it again. I'm gonna get my crimp. So we'll slide my crimp on right here, bring it down to my mark. Okay, there's my mark. Take the extra piece right here. Run it through the back of the crimp. Okay. You can see that stuck out a little, so I'll push it back through, run it to the mark. There's your mark, run it right up to the mark. And there it is right there. Get your crimper. Open this up. Again, one crimp down the middle. Slam that in there. There you go. Now, again, that's flush right up to the top. And we're going to take our last jet. I'm gonna run it down, same as the others. Basically repetitious, doing the exact same thing over and over. So this is gonna turn, turn out to be a four jet lure. Pop it in and slide it down. Oops, sorry about that. All right, so now, here's our basically our completed lure. You have your first jet, second jet, third jet, three feet later, Here's your, your jet with the hook, and that's your hook bait right there. And this one's a little bit bigger than the other ones, not by much. You can see it's a little bit thicker that one. The, the uh, weight's a little bit more on the jet itself. Okay, so that's our lure right there. Now we have to complete the lure. So to complete the lure, you're gonna need another crimp. And now for this um, shape gear, I go a little bit bigger. Not by much, but a little bit bigger. I like it to be tight on the hook, but you want a little bit room if you're running a snap swivel through it, so we tend to go a little bit bigger. So we pop the crimp on, shave gear on, like so. Swing it around, pop it through your crimp, and we open it up like so. Take your lighter, burn it. Okay, get it nice and hot, mushroom it. As you can see, I'm putting it on the side of the lighter. You could do it anything, I wouldn't do it on your skin. Make the mushroom head, not sure if you can see that. Then we slide everything down. Slide that to that. This over here, boom. So there you go, like that. And now, simple. Again, crimper. I'm gonna do this off camera so I can see it a little better. And you're gonna crimp it. Now all these crimpers will have the sizes too, which you need. 
so you look at the uh, the paperwork for it that comes with the crimpers and you'll know exactly what, what they are for each crimp itself all right I did it off camera it's a little bit easier for me to see I definitely should be doing this with my glasses on sorry the camera's a little blurry there but you can see that's your end piece right there that's your final touch Feelor. I did put it push it down twice to crimp on here to make sure I had the most crimp possible <coughs> So I'm trying to get that clear so you can see that crimp kind of in there. And you can see there's the flare on both sides. And I also burnt it, made the mushroom head in there too as well. And that's basically it. So let's go over the whole lore. That's gonna go to your snap swivel on your rod. We have some leader to play with, the leader in the fish. Here goes your first jet, right there. Just curious how big these jets are actually, because I definitely thought I measured it wrong. So, Oh, they actually are, they're four and a half inch jets. So from there, see the jets are basically apart. Yeah, it's coming up to the same thing. So they're about 12 and three quarters apart, each one. So there's your first one, there's your second one, followed by your third, and of course, three feet later, there's your stinger bait, basically. And that's your hook bait. Now we put the beads in to make sure we had the hook sitting where we wanted it. And that's it, this lure is fantastic. Ensure skipjacks, small bluefin tunas, uh, mahi mahi, Spanish mackerel, down in Florida catching kingfish on this. Even in the offshore ground, you have small baits, you could throw this on it. Again, it's only 80 pound test, it's a much lighter line. I would definitely be using lighter gear. I wouldn't have this on a 50, you know, definitely like your 20s or even, even smaller than that. And it's a blast, it catches a ton of fish. You can run it off an outrigger, run it just down the straight lines. Also, what you could do is a little trick. If you're trolling in shore, you want to get this lure to ride a little bit more onto the, to the water. Instead of bounce as much, you could take a rubber band and attach it to the real handle and also to the lure. And then when a fish strikes, it's going to pop that rubber band. And then, the uh, you know, obviously you fight your fish from there. So that's basically it. I'll do another tutorial on how to make one actually with just rubber skirts, um, which I think I have right here. Let me see. We'll do another one using basically just plain rubber skirts now cheap as can be you know he buys at bass pro shops and any tackle store these things are probably like three dollars for this package and i can make a daisy chain with this i will add some weights and stuff but that'll be my next tutorial i'll show you how to do that with this one right here but guys thanks for watching please if you like these videos click the like button if you don't like them click the dislike button it helps me with my algorithm i love all comments positive or negative uh, of anything you would like to see just send me a text write down in the comments what you like what you don't like what you would like to see and uh we'll do what we could do to ever you know to take care of you thanks again for watching and i'll see you all soon